Hello everyone and welcome to day two of the SKL regular season. This is the first week. Uh, we're excited to be here. I'm Silky Mittens on the desk today. It's just me and one other guy today. I got Designator with me. How's it going guys? We're here, yeah, day two. With our uh, second matchup of the week, we have Fellowship of the Nerds versus Just Us Guys. And we're going straight into pick ban here, the Renekton ban. I feel like it's going out towards Athena. We saw him play that beast mode Renekton in the second week, I believe, first day. At least followed the Victor coming out. I think Victor's a pretty, pretty uh, general ban, just a very strong mid laner. A lot of people in the tournament actually play him. Incredibly strong pick in that mid lane. He's just so useful in pretty much every team comp. He just does tons of damage. So everyone scared to pick him or uh, picking him for their team for sure. Skarner, not a huge surprise. Still pretty strong. Uh, getting some hot fixes. Uh, trying to tone him down a little bit, but still strong in his own right. Thresh, uh, played by Huntail a lot in, uh, in most of those games. And Ari, not a surprise there. One of the favorite mid lanes for both those te these teams. Yeah, actually. very contested pick. I'm actually surprised someone banned it. But, I mean, I, if they don't want to give it away... It's probably the best to ban it away if you don't want not comfortable playing with it. First pick, I don't Huntail and Cho's good, I believe both play Braum, but they're gonna hover the Gragas. Very strong pick, and they do lock it in. Great jungle pick, and as we see, Braum being hovered over. Yeah, for sure. Bosgood does like that Lee Sin pick in the jungle. He's very uh, comfortable in that champion, played it quite a bit in the qualifier, but also played Gragas to some great effect, able to make some plays for his team, some great explosive casts coming from him. So not a surprise there, first pick very strong. Uh, and then the Tristana, the Braum, the whole bot lane coming out already in this first rotation, but those are some great picks. Those are comfort picks for sure. We saw Dr. McFly play a lot of Tristana through the qualifiers. I feel this is a really good strategy for game one going into it. Pick your comfort picks, see how things go. Whether you win or lose, if you see a lot of mistakes, things you want to work on, you just go back, try something else, try something fun, try make it work. But as we see the Jinx getting picked up, Baby Trog, a pretty solid Jinx player. He definitely carried his team a couple of times last week. He loves that champion, not a surprise. And this is also not, I was just about to bring this up, something that would go great in that ball lane with the comfort pick Jinx would be the comfort pick on the Bard for Chaz Good. Definitely loves that champion. And man after my own heart, gotta love a good, br uh, good Bard, you know. Always fun taking those magical journeys. We'll have to see if they do an early invade with it. That's always my favorite level one. Five-man gang through the bush, running through the magical journey. But that's actually a pretty strong bot lane. If you are able to land the cosmic binding into the snares, it is a lot of CC coming out. Be able to put down a lot of poke. We do see the Garen pick up, though. Are you thinking to lock that in? I'm not quite sure. Uh, either of these teams played uh, Juggernauts a couple times, but not every time. So it has been kind of a flavor between like half the teams, I would say. Half of them was pick ban. Darius, Fiora, Garen, top lane, and then the other half didn't even touch the Juggernauts and pick ban. So, I think, I think we saw Talon last week bring out Darius. Yeah, uh, he did. actually played it. We didn't stream that game. He did play it in the tiebreaker, but he will lock in the Garen. Very strong. The RE pick. I'm also Athena got a pentakill on it during the tiebreaker, so I'm surprised they did ban it. But it's like we said, it is a uh, comfort picks. So we do see Odin picking up the Jarvan, another champion that he's very familiar with and comfortable on. Yeah, pretty interesting. Odin does have a pretty farm heavy jungle style. He likes to farm up until like level six. With Jarvan though, he does have a great early game that level two power spike, the flag and drag is pretty deadly early on. Actually gives some great damage and some good CC in early ganks. So it'll be interesting to see if he farms up to level six like the good old Odin we love and know or he'll uh, maybe break the mold and go for some early aggression. That surprises me a little bit. A guy who Plays a lot of Jarvan, being very passive. He has great gank potential early with those levels. But getting level 6 is always good. Having the Cataclysm locking down your targets. And with a non-mobile champion like Jinx, that's very good to have. Yeah, the thing with Odin's team, though, he doesn't really even need to gank because most of the time his lanes do either even or, you know, they come out ahead of their opponents. And now we're seeing the Fiora hover on the other side. So it is going to be a bit of a... A recent uh, champion rework battle in that top lane Fiora versus Garen we saw Fiora on the side of I think it was indecision come out against a Darius in the top lane in round two and Similadon absolutely destroyed the Darius um, it really is not a good matchup for Darius now that he has a wind up on his Q Fiora can just easily repost that and 
bounce back all his damage. That and ability. It's a huge counter, and <laughs> yeah, go on. It's disgusting. It's, disgusting. Ability, it's like it's like a free Zanya's built into your kit. You mm. can block anything. It's absurd, and the healing from her alt really strong. The Garen Silence, I'm curious if that's what she's going to try and repost because if you do block it, mm -hmm. it negates a lot of damage and then you can retaliate because you're not silenced. They're going to sit here on this pick of TF. TF into Lulu feels a pretty good matchup. Lulu should be able to wave clear into the TF. He does lock it in. That is a pretty good matchup. You are able to wave clear back towards him so he can't just shove the lane and TP or I guess ultimate use that destiny and get away. One thing I would like to see, we've seen it a little bit recently, is that mid laners are starting to take teleport, and I would really like to see it in the matchup against TF. TF, like you said, has that ultimate, that destiny, able to gank extremely well, coupled with the aggression from Odin, and would like to see teleport maybe come out on that Lulu. He's not really going to be in trouble against a TF in lane. He's got the polymorph, he's got the shield, so... Uh, and the ultimate as well, wild growth. So I don't think in trouble in lane would like to see teleport maybe match that global aggression that's going to come out from the TF. I do like the team comp coming out from Fellowship of the Nerds though. The Fiora has very strong split push potential, and because they have the Gragas, the Bard, and the Lulu, they can protect the Jinx while they four man push. They can run the one four zero. Really going to be able to rotate, take turrets, pull a lot of pressure with that Fiora. Had takes turrets like nobody's business if she's not pulling attention those four are going to be able to take free objectives or pull the attention down to them giving her the objective for the free turrets right so just going into this one what uh composition do you really give the advantage just going and seeing just the dry compositions who piques your interest as broken as garen is i don't know if he's as strong in competitive fives don't get me wrong we've seen some incredible garen play coming out from teams like the underdogs indecision i don't think i've seen talent play garen but i'm not going to doubt him he does play a lot of those juggernauts but i do favor the fiora i do like the jinx pick but we'll have to see if the tf can make a lot happen in those lanes you were saying odin plays really passive so we'll see if athena once he hits six if him and odin can make those plays and really convert on their leads get a lead and then so they don't get pushed in as much they're able to negate a lot of that 1-4 push being ahead. They're going to be able to take those fights. Yeah, and not a too terribly uh, large amount of magic damage on the side of Fellowship to the Nerds. So it'd be interesting to see if Jay Frazier gets behind on this Lulu, not able to pump out that magic damage. It might be easier for Justice Guys just to stack that armor and maybe uh, take advantage of the fact that they're really the only high damage sources are going to be from the Fiora and from the Jinx. So it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. I think the pre-6 is what we're going to have to look out for. That'll be the defining um, moments of this game. We're going to come in the first 10 minutes, I'd say. And that's actually where I'm very curious if Bo's good is going to build the Cinder Hulk or go with the Drazman and build that Rune Glaive. I've heard it's very strong on the Gragas. You do get rid of a lot of tanky stats but if you do get those early ganks off if odin's gonna farm and he makes those ganks count he can build that damage and be an additional ap damage source for his team right should be interesting guys we're just gonna take a short break as we load up uh, onto the rift for game one of day two week one skl regular season uh hype we got the fellowship of the nerds versus justice guys uh stick with it we'll be right back
flow, don't you know, Bobby Joe? Listen up, sister. Pull up on the drink, I guess. You know, Bobby Joe, listen up, sister. Alright guys, welcome back to game one between Fellowship of the Nerds and Just Us Guys. On the blue side, we do have Fellowship of the Nerds. Hair Blow bringing in the Fiora top lane. We have Bozgood on Gragas-esque in the jungle. Jay Frazier playing that Dragon Trainer Lulu in the mid lane. Baby Trog and Shaw's good rocking the bot lane with the Firecracker Jinx and the skin package for Bard. Chroma pack. The Chroma hype. pack. Chroma pack hype. We got Tal in the ninth in the top lane with Garen on red side, just us guys. Odin in the jungle, Jarvan the fourth. Athena playing that Twisted Fate in the mid lane. Dr. McFly bringing back his patented Tristana in the bot lane. And Huntail uh, bringing out the Braum. Uh, it's not connected right now, but it was the Braum pick. And um, I just want to talk a little bit about Braum. He has been played in pretty much all every game that we've casted over the last two and a half weeks <clears throat> so what do you think makes Braum so special now because nothing nothing's changed about him but the meta shifted a little bit so why do you think Braum is so good now as opposed to the other uh picker ban like Thresh and all the other popular supports what happened I don't understand why he came out of nowhere I his kit is very strong though you have a lot of CC with your concussive blows, your winter bites, slows, glacial fissure, AoE knockup, the unbreakable actually negates a lot of damage. And when poke comps were very common, the saw like Varus mid, the Ezreal mid, he was a very strong pick as your unbreakable would suck up a lot of that damage. But even in pro play, we see just picked and picked and picked. It's kind of nuts. They just keep driving it home. Do we see a bit of a DC here? We'll have to. Wait till Huntail gets back online. Poor Huntail. Uh, but it's probably the Braum pick. But yeah. he, it's just a very strong pick. I don't understand why he is very strong. I was actually expecting the sustained support meta to really come back in with the Nami buffs. We see Hot Dog McGee playing it a lot. It's, it's a very strong pick. I, I'm surprised we don't see Sona a lot more now. But just the CC and I think the utility of his kit make him extremely strong right now. Right. He was really popular when he first came out just because... Everyone was like, wow, his kit's so broken. He woke okay. And then he just kind of like teetered out and fell out of favor. Uh, gave way to like Janna, Thresh, these other kind of pick supports. But before they nerfed him though, he could 2v1 a lane. Like, true. his ratios were disgusting. That, that Winter's true. Bite could just destroy an AD carry. It's like, yeah, I'll trade you. Bam. So what, what counters Braum? Is it the Assassin meta? Or what, what, what kind of team comp would you see that would make Braum ineffective? 
I would say a counter engage comp. If you can, he has his ulti. He's gonna pop it. That's their main way of disengage or engaging. It, assassins are pretty good. Zed. It, it's a little hard though because if Braum sticks back, you pop that Winter's Blow on anyone he goes to assassinate. Boom, boom, boom. You have your AD carry. Has attack speed. Stunned. They're pretty. They're not gonna be able to do much. Right. But I. I don't really know. I think I I would agree that hard engage probably is Braum's biggest counter because he does have the knockup can be used the glacial fissure for disengage but it's not the optimal tool right it's the optimal is disruption in a team fight and allow for your team to get a good engage i think that's his biggest tool and the protection of course so i think a hard engage with maybe an assassin it is it would be tough to hit like a zed with the win even with like your winner's bite tag him with one auto maybe but you know an assassin might be able to get in there kill your uh, adc so i think he does counter the poke the poke comps really well, and maybe the picks. The pick, picks, the man. pick comp. Yeah, the you, pick comps. He does counter that pretty you hard. You have to as well. be behind Braum to negate the damage. He has he, that unbreakable is useless. Me being an awful Braum player, I know I've accidentally used stand behind me or the unbreakable shield the wrong way. Oh yeah. And it it's it's worthless. You look like an idiot. There's no damage absorption. So if you're a bad Braum player, like I mean, that's a counter. You just true, you, true. You put your shield yeah, on the right. Not way. being good at Braum would be a counter to that champion, but don't think they would pick him if that was the case. Huntail, pretty good support in his own right. Has seen him make some pretty good plays on the champions like Thresh. Pretty yeah. good Braum player, so gonna expect that. Did bring the ignite in this game, so maybe they're expecting to be able to bully these guys around. I can see it. You know, Bard does struggle against champions that do like to get in your face. He's good against. He's good sustain, and he does have a little bit of a pick opportunity with his uh, cosmic binding as well but I think they might struggle maybe in these early levels if a good winner's bite comes down and Dr. McFly's jumping in there they might find themselves in a little bit they of a pickle. They can trade very well because Charles Good is going to try and trade especially when he has those meeps available to empower his auto attacks he's going to be looking to put a lot of damage down on Dr. McFly. They do have the sustain on their side but if he gets caught out misses a cosmic binding they just turn it around he can magical journey, but he has to be near something to go through. Not when you're help. in the middle of a lane, you yeah. can't just throw the magical journey through a wave, creep wave. So that is very good. But at the same time, Baby Trog can also help out with the Flame Chompers, getting him out. The Zap's also efficient. But I would honestly put more money towards Baby Trog and Chaz Good, not as a skill matchup. But just Jinx can outrange Dr. McFly early with those rockets. Mm -hmm. I think she has a bit of a stronger early game. That explosive charge does do a lot of damage. But Baby Trog and Chaz Good should be able to trade fairly well against Huntail and Dr. McFly. But for me, I'm going to be looking at the top lane, man. I think that's the matchup to watch right now. I know nothing of the Garen Fiora matchup. So I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. Really, no one quite knows all of Fiora's matchups. I think all of them go well based on the fact she's just OP uh, after her <laughs> re rework, but you really kind of re have to rediscover a champion's strengths and weakness weaknesses after they get reworked. All the juggernauts, you kind of got to refigure out what beats them. Uh, I think range beats most juggernauts, but Fior has the, the, the dash, right, to get onto people, so not even range can really beat a Fiora, so it'll be interesting to see the matchup. But that being said, the top lane being something to look out for do you see the junglers spending a lot of time up there or do you think they it just uh let them be uh, like to themselves or i think it would be very beneficial to get the fewer ahead she's a very strong champion and not letting being able to 1v1 the garen in lane is going to be very important because if she becomes the villain I guess that also kind of puts a target on your head. He's going to get that power boost. But if you're getting Fiora ahead is very important. If she's going to be your split pusher, you need her strong so that she's not going to rely on the team for help. If she does have that lead. She's kind of a girls champion. She can 2v1 if she has the itemization right. I'm not sure she's going to be able to 2v1 in Jarvan and Garen. But getting your split pusher ahead is very crucial in these team comps. So I can see Bo's good going up there, but not so much Odin. Right. I'm... Also interested to see if the junglers may spend time in the bot lane because really you look at Tristana and Jinx for both these teams, those are late game hyper carries, right? So at the same time, you want to get Harablo ahead onto the Fiora, but you'd also like to see Baby Trog get fed on this Jinx and with a protective support like Bard, getting those 
you know, those uh, rockets out in those team fights. going to be huge, especially she's uh, critting with the, her item advantage. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what Bosgood chooses here. Maybe he does a little bit of both. Spend some time in top lane, spend some time in bot lane. Share the love. I cry about this a lot, but I swear if I don't see a Zeke's Harbinger built this game, but that supportive team comp around this Jinx, I'm going to cry, man. It's, it's so strong. I think people underestimate the amount of damage that Jinx does with that item. But right off level one, we see a bit of a scrum here. Athena's got the yellow card prep. He's trying to get close. Does hit Jay Frazier. The Winter's Bite just missing, but looks like they're just having a little fun. Scrumming around, throwing abilities at each other. Not really trying to do anything. They get their ward coverage and they leave. Both teams actually do have a decent level one. Uh, if the Cosmic Binding has started on Bard. You can get a pretty good stun onto two, at least two members. The yellow card for Athena on TF. So... Actually, pretty good level ones uh, for both team comps here. Not too much, not finding the correct CC uh, on the right members, but uh, just poking their heads in, saying, "Hey guys, we're here. Hope you hope you have a good match, and uh, we're gonna head back to lanes here. It looks like standard lanes too. It looks like very standard start coming from lanes and jungles. I was curious. I'm. I wasn't sure if Fiora could start a camp on her own to get that early level two. I, I personally don't like the champion just because I'm an AD carry main, you get wrecked even before the rework. But I wasn't sure if after this rework, if she was strong enough to do it, I don't think we'll see Garen start it. So probably pretty standard from both sides. But with Onan being a farmer, I really hope we see him gank early though. They have a very strong level two, especially bot lane with the Braum and the Jarvan. So I think an early gank bot would be very advantageous, but to his play style, I don't think we'll see very much of that. Yeah, we could also see an early gank mid. I could see Odin finishing his first rotation of jungle camps. Jarvan can get through most of his jungle, so getting some gold for himself. We do see a lot of fighting in this top lane. Uh, like you said, gonna have to look out for that, but I would almost like to see Odin get mid, get this TF ahead, because if he gets ahead before he even hits level six, that's gonna be super dangerous for uh, these guys on Fellowship of the Nerds. So maybe we'd like to see Odin return back to that mid lane, get the yellow card synergy with the flag and drag. Maybe apply some pressure there. And Lulu actually running Ignite. Doesn't even go another defensive summoner. He's looking for kills, man. He's going full Bjergsen in this. It's a very... It, she does have a lot of early damage. I Very disgusting support. That's why I felt she was very good early. That she doesn't burn through a lot of mana and using that Glitter Lance to help picks. You can put down so much damage on people, but... Hun Haravlo having a lot of trouble here in this top lane early, and I'm actually not surprised. That decisive strike is does a lot of damage. The silence, and it's on a fairly short cooldown, giving you that burst of speed as well, makes it really hard to dodge. Yeah, Fiora does have a pretty good level two. Garen also has a good level two as well, though. So not too surprised there. I think it'll take Fiora a couple items, maybe after her first back to start doing some damage back to the Garen. Garen's got some great base uh, defense stats as well as base damage on his abilities so maybe not surprising uh, regardless of the level 2 power spike of this Fiora gonna take a little bit of time I think before we really see maybe a kill come out for Harablo. I think once he gets that counter I'm hoping he can start retaliating with damage maybe absorb the decisive strike turn around put back damage you do have that jump that's now a skill shot your dash you don't need a target to dash too you can just dash whichever direction you want so it can use as a defensive can use it offensively but as long as he's not getting silenced he can get away right and we do see boots uh, and pots picked up for athena this is uh season three it seems going for that a little bit surprising maybe uh in a lulu matchup what do you think about that it's very common for tfs to actually rush the distortion no not distortion uh the cooldown boots can't remember. Lucidity. Uh, Lucidity. Thank you. He will run those. I'm pretty certain he will rush those boots. That way you're getting your cards out faster and it keeps Destiny up quick. I think this means we're going to see Athena ganking a lot, but oh, here we go. I thought Odin was about to make his way down, but just grab and scuttle. Maybe, oh, he might find Bose good here, but he's a little low and only has one buff, so he has to be very careful. This is not good. He is looking for the gank mid, but Bo's good. Does spot him out. Odin, maybe sleeping on the job here. Oh, he throws the flag just too far. He is forced to flash. Help is on Odin. He does get the body slam and the empowered auto. That's first blood for Bo's good. Maybe we see Odin try and make a play early, but a little too low and gets caught out in Th the enemy jungle. This is why he never makes those plays before he's level 6. Now, I think Odin was just keeping uh, too much of his attention on the mid lane, watching every move that Jay Frazier was making, and in the meantime, Bozgood walks right around, has already backed and picked up 
uh, you know, his Rangers Trailblazer. So, unfortunately for him, sneak attack. He had the right idea, though. That early gank, I mean, like we were saying, Lulu did not have the summoners, the double defensive. She did blow flash there. Jay Frazier doesn't have it, so he could go there, try and gank again, get him ahead, because they're going to need, with TF rushing those boots, he's going to be looking to roam, and they need to make sure they can enable him by getting those waves shoved in and having him able to combat the push that Lulu is going to put down in that mid lane. Yeah, would have liked to see uh, maybe Odin back and get his items before maybe getting the Chilling Smite as well. Uh, a little bit of a missed Chompers there by Baby Trug in the bot lane, but Dr. McFly going to uh, trade some autos. But in the top lane, just a little bit of a gank there, but nothing's going to happen. Garen's too tanky, the even tanky. with just the Dorn Shield. <laughs> those are really awkward Chompers. I don't even know if that's Baby Trug's fault. I feel like Riot kind of screwed him over there. <laughs> Kind of clustered all of them together. He wasn't even near a wall or anything. So did did they oh, bounce? Did they bounce no, off actually, Unbreakable? Yeah, if Unbreakable's up, you can't actually throw the pass. So I think that's actually oh, what happened. Wow. Bounced off and put him right there. That was actually okay. very nice by Huntail there. Then yeah, for like, sure. It must have been the first. No one must have hit it because I think it blocks the first ability. So maybe that was exactly. Okay, what it was. that's funny. I thought maybe they would have dropped even straight down, but they just bounced off. So that's decent. So good counter confirmed. Uh, <laughs> Brom countered it, Baby Trog's Jinx here. Today I learned, Sookie Mittens. Yeah, today, today we I learned. learned. You're only diamond, but it's okay. You know, it's not like I made AD carry or no. anything, so I shouldn't know these things. But yeah, these are brand new champions, right? As far as CS going bot lane, we do see Baby Trog has a slight advantage up about 9 CS. But in the top lane, Talon, very solid 10 CS lead. He did get ganked, didn't blow any summoners, but we do see him putting down a lot of damage on the Baby Trog here. Throws down the Chompers. Not quite far enough as they were already running away. Those chompers don't have feet. They're not going to catch up. I think just anticipating more follow through, but we do see the gank. The Destiny going to come out. The gold card going to land as well. The heal going out on the baby trog. The wild card is not going to be enough. A good cosmic binding on a Dr. McFly. Going to stop any further aggression. Uh, in the top lane, Fiora's just poking at this Garen with the stick, it seems like. But great gank, but nothing coming of it. They might not have got a kill, but they just blew four summoners. That is every summoner down on the bot lane. And, oh, TF did not rush the boots. He did go the double Doran's ring and the uh, mana crystal. Maybe going to build that towards the Sheen, get ready for that early Lich Bane. But we do see a TP coming in from Harablow. Oh, the magical journey coming up a little short. I I'm actually don't understand how that just happened, but... I think they're gonna just steal this drag as like thanks for the leash as there's the fellowship of the nerds come down. They pick up dragon for free. You know, if Talon would have uh, counteracted that TP, we probably would have saw a big fight, but I would have maybe like to see that come out. I think that Just Us guys could have put up a pretty good fight, especially if all the members kind of at the back of Dragon Pit and half the members coming around the front, they could have turned on one of them, uh, maybe turned on to Harablo as soon as he TP'd. Maybe could have done some damage there, but instead kind of given that one up for free. Like you said, thanks for the leash, boys. Uh, we're going to take this from here. They had the summoner advantage, so I'm surprised they didn't fight, but they were also very low, the bot lane from that gank. Not sure. It, giving up first Dragon isn't the worst thing in the world. Harablo doesn't have TP now, so I'm going to be looking for Talon to maybe make a TP gank bot let baby trog and chaz good push in get that deep board down tp bot with tf do a five man dive bot if you want try and get some kills off of that but now that he has a tp advantage i think we're gonna have to hope that just us guys look to make a play out of the advantage and get ahead for giving up that free dragon yeah the more i think about it the more i kind of agree with just us guys it was only the first dragon and there was no fight so they did win the bot lane, getting all four of those summoners. There could be a huge fight in the next couple of minutes, and that could be very crucial. And like you said, Talon now has the TP advantage and the CS lead in the top lane. Gonna get some defensive items. Gonna be harder and harder to kill. Gonna delay the snowball from Fiora. So the more I think about it, maybe just a little bit of calculated uh, calculations by uh, by just those guys there. And I think. I'm on their side. I think a lot of people have this misconception that like you have to fight for first drag and they try and sacrifice themselves to like, oh, we have to fight this, we can't give it up for free. But then you're losing dragon and kills. That's a lot of gold. You lose three team members and you don't even get drag out of it. That's a big risk. And backing off was probably the best choice for them. It was a numbers advantage. Oh, hard blow though. Taking a lot of damage from Talon, he's not going to be able to kill him as he does drop that Dutch Judgment. Unfortunately, he was not the villain at the time. He's looking at the villain who's really coming at him now. But he didn't just quite have the damage. Yeah, he has a huge CS advantage up there. Talon doing a lot of work on this Garen. And I think he's kind of surprising us with how this matchup is going. I definitely didn't see the Garen overtaking the Fiora. But very good early start for just this guys in that top lane. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's looking like just us guys are actually pulling ahead. We kind of thought that it would be Fellowship of the Nerds pulling ahead this pre-6 uh, pre slash mid-game. Um, but it looks like it's just us guys, so that's pretty scary. The TF going to have a lot more ganks. We saw it once, and it was pretty... You know, pretty good results from that. So, actually, a little bit surprising from our early predictions, but just us guys pulling ahead. Uh, can never doubt these guys, I don't think. No, and I'm trying to sit here and think if the TF is going to be able to split push. Oh, we do see the fight going down. Huntail being very scared. He can't go back. He's going to hit the chompers. As Dr. McFly catches it, but he walks over it in the end, anyways. Great buster shot there by Dr. McFly. Oh, but he picks him off with a super mega death rocket. Very nice step back, though, by Dr. McFly just dodging. The tempered fate. I think that would have been death for him if you got caught by that, having no rocket jump available. Absolutely great pressure by Chazgood and Baby Trog in this bot lane. It was funny because the cosmic binding landing onto Huntail's Braum and the Chompers actually missed. Went behind. Maybe this was calculated, but instead of going for the Braum, it went behind and then it caught Dr. McFly. So Huntail was left all alone to die to the Mega Death Rocket and the Tempered Fate yeah. almost catching onto Dr. McFly. Odin's gonna sign him, find himself behind enemy lines here though. I don't know if this is really good. Odin, okay, good. Bo's good backing off. I was gonna say, I don't think you want to tower dive, yeah. even though you do have the numbers advantage, the ulties work down. But yeah, Baby Chog actually really great chompers. He puts it behind Huntail, which forces him to come towards them. They're gonna be able to put damage on him. Unfortunately, Dr. McFly can hit now, but we do see top lane, Harbo and Talon creating a lot of damage, that judgment is available. He is not the villain, thankfully, but he has to be very careful because that ulti does a surprising amount of damage as it is an execution. We're gonna have to see if he can get one more combo down. I think he will be able to kill Harrow Blow if he's unable to repost any of that damage. Does the villain get calculated by the member with the most gold on the enemy team? Do you I know how that was, works? I think the villain is the champion that on the enemy team who most recently had kills. Okay, I th remember reading a rider tweet about this, and I think I think that might, you might actually be right, but they're definitely going to change that. We see Athena in the top lane, the gold card going to come out. Rablo not going to have the repost ready. The Judgment actually going to repost the wild card. Flash coming out from Talon, the D Duke away, but the Destiny is still available. Athena still chasing. The wild card is eventually going to catch up Rablo, but that looks very nice. Happy Feet coming out on the Fiora. Bosgood going to try and do what he can. That might These be members are pretty here, low. We uh, do see Drake Frazier coming up. But no mana onto Athena, getting the blue card out. The explosive cast oh. going to push Talon all the way back. Great play. And it looks like we do have Jay Frazier coming in with the backup. That is actually going to be two kills. Very oh. nice. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, just one kill. All right. My That's bad. Okay. It's, that was a great <laughs> explosive cast. Everybody both good knocking him back there. I, unfortunately, horrible with that heroic play. Oh my goodness, Athena trying to put down damage. He has to be very careful. Explosive cast. Oh, the flask. The flash body slam. He gets a keg and they pick him another kill. Very aggressive by Athena. He didn't have a lot of mana there. Nor summoners. Maybe a questionable. Oh, and the BM coming out. <laughs> the laugh. But that was a great repost there by Horrible, man. He dodged the wild cards and I believe some of Garen's damage flashes away. The destiny wasn't used close enough. He didn't try and go behind him and cut him off. He just went as close as he could. And I think Harville ended up walking into the wild card, which is really unfortunate. But they put a lot into that to get, and in the end, Fellowship of the Nerds actually comes up with two kills out of it. So definitely an advantage, and they pick up Blood Turret. Yeah, definitely. Harablo making the outplays, just living as long as he could, allowed his team to come up. Jay Frazier was coming from the back. It's going to be hard for him to follow Athena around, not having the teleport ulti available. But Athena actually walked up behind that one, so maybe we'd like to see Dre Jay Frazier act a little bit sooner on that one. Ooh, the blue gonna be picked up by Athena. It's close. Chazgood was uh, chomping at the bit to maybe steal that one away. Not gonna be. Athena gotta pick up that one. So that was actually really nice by Harablo. Uh, definitely the MVP of that fight, allowing for his team to come and back him up in the end. This is gonna be a very scary dragon fight, I think, for just us guys. Oh, never mind. Talon is heading down. He Neither top laner has teleport as both were just expended. But Jay Frazier making his way up. Oh, we do see the exhaust going down onto Athena, though. And he gets caught out. Great cosmic binding, catching him on the wall as Huntail comes in, does throw out the Winter's Bite, but nothing. Oh, Zap going out as well. He's gonna poke him down. They should just turn and take Dragon. It's a 4v4. Chaw's good. I mean, Jay Frazier not available, but Bo's good. He does get the explosive cast of Buster Shot to use him, but he just easily jumped over the wall there with Rocket Jump, getting himself to safety. But that's another ulti down on both sides. I think this is looking favorable for Fellowship of the Nerds. They should be able to take this. And even if they just flaunt around Dragon, Jay Frazier might be able to take that top tower. Holding, going behind. 
He does drop the ward. We're going to see if he's able to pick it up. But we do see Harblow going in. Going to try and kill him before the Flagon Dragon. And he does get the smite. He kind of closes immediately as the Glacial First is also used. Dr. Fly jumps in. Can they pick up the kill on Bolgood? They do get him the heal. Keeps Odin alive as he flashes away. Harblow not going to be able to catch anyone. The reset from the kill is able to jump over the wall. The explosive charge is down, but it's not going to be enough as Winter's Bite misses. Not going to be able to get the stall. Great play there by Just Us Guys. Wow, so Harablo actually diving over the Dragon Pit wall to try and take out uh, Odin before the dragon goes low enough, but just can't kill him fast enough. Still having the flag drag available, Odin goes back, and now Fiora's stuck. Now she has to walk all the way around, and all of a sudden the numbers advantage is on Justice Guy's side. Still having the Cataclysm available too, Odin gonna steal that one in style, and then help his team win a team fight after. So, really great fight, a little bit of a misplay, maybe miscalculation on Harablo's part. Thought he could kill Odin faster, wasn't the case, and it actually ended up costing them. They do get the tower in the top lane, Jay Frazier was up there, not having a teleport available, would have been nice, just saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, do like, I do like that summoner on the mid laners uh, these days, if it's the right matchup, but great play by just us guys. And this is what we were talking about earlier, giving up that first dragon and not sacrificing the kills. They do pick up a turret, but they lose two of their members in the meantime, giving up the dragon as well, which was stolen by Smite. They didn't have the numbers advantage nor did they have TP available and they still tried to fight that. Just as guys taking advantage and that's very much in their favor. They did lose a turret, but they picked up that first dragon and a couple of kills. The gold lead a little bit ahead because of that turret, but this is a very close game. Yeah, definitely. Justice Guy's really proving that they're a strong contender in this SKL early on in the season. There are some tougher teams out there, but definitely showing what they're made of. Fellowship of the Nerds is a very strong team in their own right, so this is a very close game. It's exactly what we wanted. A uh, little bit of a one-sided uh, game last night, but we do have some action in the mid lane. The Explosive Cast going to put Huntail back. Polymorph to stand behind me to Dr. McFly. The Mega Death Rock going to sail by, but his four versus one in this mid lane. Dr. McFly going to flash away. Athena having the gold card prepped. The Dragon Flag the Tempered Fate going to land on two members and the tower. Going to allow his team to get away from that one. Probably not going to want to stay in there too much longer. Frazier actually going to flash back in. The Wild Growth and the Ignite going to take down Dr. McFly. Calculate a risk by Jay Frazier. Going to pay off. Boz going to stick around too. No mana. Chaw's good. Having the Meeps available. Athena going to get taken down by Odin but find himself under this tower. Bosgood going to go down eventually too. Harablo and Talon even fighting. They wanted piece to action as well. And wow, just a great fight. We were just talking about just as guys making good plays, and it fell to the nerds saying we can make good plays too. I now understand why Jay Frazier is packing Ignite. This guy is ballsy. Flashes under the turret, knowing he can get the damage down. That was actually a great, he used help picks and then shot the Glitter Lance from afar. Getting the damage down, getting that Ignite, securing the kill. It was a great attempt there to put down the damage, but MVP for me that fight, Chaw's good. That ult he saved baby truck. Immediately throws down the chomper, so as soon as he comes out of it, he gets stunned. And then he gets hit by Cosmic Binding. Just the CC train coming out. Great fight there by Hush of the Nerds, but Harablo trying to push this as he does pop the ulti. But Judgment comes down, laying down the hammer, dropping bows on kids. Talon, Thunder God Garen, showing why he is an OP pick right now. Wow, Bosgood is actually the villain, and it doesn't even matter. This Garen pick is actually super strong. This is going against everything we thought, although we don't really know the matchup that well. And just look at this gold lead that he's amassed, over 1,200 gold at this point in the game, just before 20 minutes. This really went against everything we thought of. Maybe Garen... Uh, Gonna be a pick at Worlds? Are we calling it now? <laughs> Worlds confirmed. But Worlds this is confirmed. what I was saying. He is so good 1v1, and I think that's why he's such a strong solo queue champion because of these buffs. But I'm very curious to see how the team play goes. So Todd's good. Might get caught out here. Magical journey through the wall. Both TPs coming in here. Cancelled by ta oh sorry, cancelled by Horrorblow. Probably the better cancel of the TP is he was about to walk in to three champions with their oh, ulti is available, however. Never mind. Might have been able to heal a little bit. But a lot of pressure there. Oh, the Tempered Fate does go off. Catches four of them. This is going to be bad. Explosive Cast is not available. They do put down a lot of damage on the Huntail. He does get Windy. He turns around. He gets off. The Glacial Fisher. Super Mega Death Rocket just missing him. They turn in a lot of damage being turned around. Both good CCing with the Body Slap. Talon does keep chasing. He does have the speed advantage. Getting slowed. Ooh, the Glitter Lance almost catching Huntail in the back line. There's a lot of damage going down here. And the AD carry is not even there yet. Talon turning around, putting down a lot of damage. 
He does he Oh my goodness, there's so many people low. He doesn't have the ultis. If Jinx gets one of these kills, the resets are about to go nuts. And there we go. The first kill picked up by Zap. Can he chase Hintail? Great slow there. Zap about to come up. Cool down. But they're just gonna walk away. And that was an insane fight for only one person going down. Great job there by Fellowship of the Nerds, even without their AD carry, doing a lot of damage. I feel so bad for Chaw's good in this one. That was an insane tempered fate. Catching four members, that's like a wet dream. Boz good didn't have the explosive cast though. Not gonna be able to do anything there. They're gonna get a turn from this though, so oh. they do come out on top, but Talon hasn't had enough. He's gonna go in. The help pick's gonna help Baby Trog. The repose oh. gonna take down. Oh my gosh, blocking that uh, judgment. That's that what ability is overpowered. Repost is disgusting. It's a free Zonyas. That was a for sure kill there. Oh, we do see Athena using the Destiny, but they throw the Chompers exactly on there, and he just backs off. Does not want to get caught by that CC. And Baby Trog with the Help Me Pick Shield just crushing it. They might be able to pick up another kill here. Oh, Jarvan does come in. He flashes away. Doesn't want to get flag and drag as the yellow card was popped there. But that was a great push by Fellowship of the Nerds. Picking up a lot of gold. They're going to go back. Buy items and be ready for this dragon that spawns right now. Man, just as guys are like waking up right now, it's like a morning after a heavy night of drinking. They're like, what just happened? What, you know, what did I do last night? They're now down 5k gold. They used to be down like a mm, thousand gold like two minutes ago before that fight all went down. Lost two towers out of it. The inhibitor tower going down. That's crucial for opening up the map for Fellowship of the Nerds. Just a hectic fight and... This could have went either way. There was low members on both teams, both got like a bunch of guys everywhere almost going down. You know, it's really unfortunate for Justice guys, but that could have went either way. Oh, they just couldn't secure a kill. I'm not sure if Judgment wasn't available while he was spinning there because he could have Judgment anyone in there and got one kill. But they fought that without Baby Trog and he picked up all the kills coming back into that fight later on. And now they have themselves a nice six or 5k gold lead as Odin and Chazgood going toe to toe. But Chazgood, magical journey in. He wants a piece of that guy. He's looking at the whole team here. This is a ballsy bard, my friend. Yeah, definitely making a lot of picks, actually. Expect Braum to make a lot of picks with his concussive blow passive and his winter's bite. Tempered Fate gonna come out mid. Not gonna catch anyone sidestepping that one. Huntail with the happy feet there. If you don't ever want dancing lessons, just go to that guy. But unfortunately, a lot of pressure coming down. Baby Trog's going to be able to take down this inhibitor insanely fast, but just got to look out for him not to get caught. You were asking me earlier, oh, we do see Odin go in. He does flag and drag. He does. Jinx does not have a flash available, but you do use Wild Growth to keep her alive. A lot of CC goes down, but no one's able to kill him. He's full health now. Not being able to take him down. The Glacial Fisher and the Cataclysm used, but the Wild Growth keeping him alive as well as the Health Pick Shield there. Those are the nerds picking up a kill and an inhibitor walking out. They might just go straight for Baron now. Man, this is just a Jinx comp, you know? It's just a Jinx comp. You got to keep him alive. You got the Lulu. That is their win condition. Get Baby Trog ahead. Have Harablo just, in, you know, naturally snowball out of this top lane. Just a disgusting champion overall. So uh, no problem there. And then just Bosgood making plays. Explosive cast. And Chazgood as well. You know, the, the Bash Brothers. Bosgood, Chazgood making these picks happen. Uh, making sure their team stays alive. Gonna pick up the Nasher for themselves as well. More magical journeys going out, looking for more. They're gonna look for these picks as for just as guys were looking for something. A lot of speed there, Athena. Ooh, gotta be careful. The, thankfully, that bush not warded. He might have got caught out there. Jay Fraser just laughing. He's saying, "Come on, come at me. I'm no mana, but I'll still take you on." I gotta say though, my favorite item about to be purchased by the Bard. You have the. I, oh, we do see Odin though catching Jay Fraser on the war. Doctor McFly jumps in there. The flash probably not gonna be enough. As that explosive charge chip, pick up the kill. Red card. KS. Just, uh, just, just to make <laughs> kill sure. Secured. <laughs> kill secured. Kill secured. secured. He, he ulted just to make sure. Yeah, Dr. McFly might be a little PO'd, but that's a kill. Oh, they're cutting off Harblow now. See, the yellow card does come out. Does he have repost? He does use the dash to get away. He reposted, but the flag and drag goes up. Just flashes away. He does get away. Very well played by Harblow. It is a blown summoner, but with that quick recall, he can just TP straight back in. That is so OP. It's like a spell shield, but you get to damage them at the same time. And still using the flash there, just to get out of the flag and drag as well. Man, Fiora, strong champion. I'm gonna have to pick that one up for myself. Maybe get out of silver one of these days. Who knows? <laughs> but I doubt it. Yeah, I need a little more help than that. But man, this Fiora pick, it's been working. We've only seen it a couple times. Not many top laners really picking it up. Maybe a higher skill cap, but if you can pick it up and you can do some damage on it, practice up on it, Parabola has really shown it can make some plays. Grand Challenge is very good for healing your team as well. If you use it on a low health target, you know your team's already gonna kill and you pop the AoE healing, 
you might as well have like an OP Jan on your team that does damage. You're healing everyone. Plus, you oh, see Charles getting in a bad spot here. But he does pick up the Zeke Harbinger. It is used on the Jinx. She has Phantom Dancer. She has IE. That's a solid 90% crit. You throw out the AoE rockets that can all crit damage. Man, if they thought they were in trouble before with this Jinx, they gotta look out now. Death Cap picked up by Jay Frazier as well. Gonna give a lot of health with the shield, with the wild throw. Had to be very careful. Oh, we do see Odin go in. He does use the Cataclysm, but he's very low. Temper Fate catching all of the damage except for Talon. Negating a lot of it, but we do see them re-engage. The Glacial Furniture yet is used. Can they pop the concussive blows? No, but Baby Truck coming back up with a lot of damage. Jeeks Harbinger is popped. The crits are flying. The double kill is picked up. He's still chasing down Super Mega Deathrock. Gonna pick up the third kill. Another kill onto Huntail. Damage is down. The Quadra the kill. The I want to see them die. They have used the wild growth. Oh, uh, but Odin, he's gonna hide on Fountain, probably being wise. He, he's not giving up that free penta. Or he's coming back he? for more. Dave Frazier flanking. He's got the whimsy. He's standing there. Are they gonna give it to Baby Truck? He's trying to ignite us down, but ooh, that laser kind of deterring Baby Truck. Saying, nah, you know, I don't really want to give up this KD8. It's a heck of a thing, but. What I tell you, they pop those crits coming up. That's huge. I think we found our encounter to Braum. It's a lot of damage coming out from the front line. And CC. But a very good ult by Chazgood again. This guy's MVP. These tempered fates have been clutch, man. He locked up Dr. McFly and Athena. Talon, the only one going to be able to do damage there. They disengage and they go straight back in. They pop the Zeke's Harbinger. Lulu speeds up Baby Truck and they just start doing damage. Yeah, the good thing about that fight is Boz good held on to all his crucial summoner spells, holding on to that flash, holding on to the explosive cask as well, and holding on to the body slam until the tempered fate resets and all those members are just sitting ducks. That's just like free for Bosgood. He goes in, body slams in there, explosive cask, actually pins Dr. McFly against the tower. Athena stepping back into that fight just to throw to blue card. Maybe just trying to get that damage in, but then not expecting uh, some more damage coming in. Doc or Doc uh, Baby Trog, rather, just pumping out all the damage. Got too close for comfort for Athena. He's going to go down, and then that great Mega Death Rocket getting the resets for Baby Trog this onto is... Dr. McFly. It's a comfort pick, and I can see why. He's so good on it, and it's, it's great. But this is why the Jinx Lulu is so disgusting. You get one kill, you get excited, you whimsy. Man, you might as well be in NASCAR. You are ripping across the map. You're so fast. Then you're just firing up rockets like nobody's business. It's just a ton of speed and a ton of damage coming out. And it just makes it easier for her to keep getting those resets on her speed. They're down about 10k gold now. Who talked to McFly taking so much damage. He gets killed again by Baby Target. The rest of the team there. The wild growth is used. on Jay Frazier keeping himself alive as he was tanking the turrets. The Harbinger is popped. They're just going to take the turret. The exhaust goes down on the town. They're going to keep putting down a lot of damage. We'll have to see. Can he get the pentakill right here? Tempered Fate locking up three of them. The explosive cask is available. Is he going to knock him back? A lot of damage going out. Baby Truck picks up another kill. They do pick up Talon. Harblow picking that one up. Odin is on the fountain. And Cra or, I'm sorry, Silky. They're going to pick up another kill. Baby Truck just keeps going. He is killed by the laser. Maybe this is an end game. Oh, just kidding. It's an open nexus. They just need to pick up that inhibitor. Harblow is going to go whap it with his stick, but Dr. McFly is back. We're going to see maybe he's going to be able to hold them off as he did get killed there earlier. He's forced to just jump out. I think this is game. Great play by Post of the Nerds. Holy, and Odin wants more. He hasn't had enough. Just desperation at this point. Harablo just going to keep hitting the Nexus. Probably could just kill Odin at this point. Maybe they're just like, ah, you're just a fly on the wall. We don't care about you. They're actually just going to go for the Nexus. Maybe a little bit of mercy there at the end. Hectic, hectic. Last couple minutes there. But I think it was just desperation was the name of the game at the end for just us guys trying to get what they could, but actually just getting caught, really. And you know what? For how out of hand this game got in a hurry, it was very close for a majority of the game. That one team fight where Baby Trog picked up a couple of kills, they swung, got two turrets, and had that open inhibitor. That was huge, and I feel like that was really the breaking point for just us guys. They couldn't find the right fights after that. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't really get ahead far enough to make this pick comp work, right? That's what TF strives with is the picks, and he just didn't get ahead in the early game. Couldn't transition to a good mid game with those destinies. Maybe got one or two kills here and there with those ultimates, but it cost his team too much with those roams, and Felsh for the Nerds taking advantage, like we said, many times over throughout the course of the game it was very close until that big big hectic like three minutes team fight uh, 
just snowballed out of control after that. Talon doing a great job, though, at shutting down the split pushing Fiora. He kept her in check. He was up CS all game. Even finishing the game, he was up 50 CS. He kept that split pusher in check, and he was really relying on his team to do the rest. Jarvan going tanky, then building that Titanic Hydra, trying to get a little more damage down, but they just weren't able to find the right picks. And when they did have the right fights... They just, unfortunately, were not coming out on the right side. But I think we're going to have ourselves a really great game, too, as that game was very close until that one T-fight. Absolutely. The gold chart for this game is going to look like a dead person coming back to life. It's going to be a flat line, flat line for pretty much the whole game, and then it's just going to spike so incredibly huge uh, for Fellowship of the Nerds. But, guys, we're just going to take a quick little break, uh, maybe a little video break, but we'll be right back with some more discussion about game two between Fellowship of the Nerds and Just Us Guys. Stay tuned. 